Welcome to this video. So this video is going to talk about how you actually record each lecture in your course. Now you may remember from the video about equipment and setup that I said if you can buy an external camera it will do amazing things. If you can buy an external mic it will do amazing things. But once you have all of these you actually need to record the lectures. So what I suggest is you Find a nice place in your house or your apartment that you use all the time for your filming. A simple backdrop that won't distract the viewer when they're actually looking at your content. Because the worst thing that you could do is maybe have a bookshelf in the background and then people are trying to see or read what are the books that are on that bookshelf. I always try to record at the same time during the day. I will also try and record a whole course in a number of hours so that the lighting is the same, so that I'm standing in the same position. Once you've done that, the next thing that you have to do is edit. Now, a lot of the times, I just leave a pause in between areas where I want to edit. And I know that I can edit these things out using iMovie, or if you're using a PC, a similar program. Now, when you leave a pause, it's much better. Because as I said to you, if you talk really quickly like this, and then you want to try and up, you want to you want to edit out a mistake, it's going to be very difficult. But when you talk like this, and you leave enough pauses, well then it's very easy to edit out any mistakes. But also make sure that you leave maybe five seconds before you start talking, and five seconds after you actually stop talking, to make sure that you have that buffer. To help you edit. So here's a couple of tips. The first thing to do is always do a quick test record. Why? Because you may be all mic'd up and you may believe that you're recording from the actual external camera and then when you go and you start to edit the video or play back the recording you see that you're actually using the internal audio or the internal camera and then you have to go and re-record everything. The next point I would say is to start recording and don't start to speak for about five or 10 seconds. Maybe do a countdown, five, four, three, two, one. Because what I found is sometimes you start to speak and the computer hasn't started to record right away so that you suddenly start in in mid sentence. And do exactly the same when you finish speaking. Because what you don't want to do is say, and that's the end of the lecture. And then you go to switch off the recording and then you can't cut that little bit. So what I will do is, I will say, okay, let's now move over to iMovie. And I wait, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so here we are, I've opened up iMovie, and I have this video file which is called Recording and Editing. And this is actually the original footage that you've just been viewing. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to click and drag this into iMovie. Now, don't worry, if you're on a PC, the features that we're going to see are more or less the same. You may just have to dig around on Camtasia or whatever software you're using to edit, but it is very similar. This here is called the timeline, and this is where all of your video is kept. Now what I like to do is I like to zoom in a little bit here so I can just see everything. So the first thing I do is I click on the video, I go up here to this icon, and I reduce background noise. This just filters out some background noise. So in iMovie, if I feel the volume is too low, I can bring my mouse pointer over to this line and I can increase the volume. I can drag it up or I can drag it down if it's too high. Now, anytime you see a peak like this, a yellow peak, that means that it is a little bit too loud. So I'm just gonna bring that back down to 100%. And that's the first thing. Now, you may remember that what I said to you was make sure that you leave maybe five to ten seconds before you start talking and recording at the beginning. So that is this section here. Now, if I just move my mouse pointer here, I can see where I was obviously connecting up the camera. I just hit record and my laptop was just down below so I could monitor. So I would go here and this is probably where I start talking. Now, how do I know? Because these little audios here are probably just movement and the audio suddenly picks up here. I'm gonna say that this is where I start talking. Now, what I can do is if I click here, I can right click 
and I can choose split clip. So that just divides those clips into two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this clip here. And that's it, that's gone. The next thing that I do is I go through the audio and I would obviously be playing this and listening. And any gaps that I see here of silence, I'm actually gonna just split the clip here. And I'm gonna take out those gaps because it might be too long. Now, if I find that I put a gap for a reason, for example, I had to repeat something, I could just right click here and split the clip and for example, delete this section here. I would continue to do that until I have very few gaps left. So I'm just gonna delete this and I'm gonna split the clip here. And now what I would do is, I would just make sure by passing my mouse pointer along the clips, make sure that there's no funny movements on my head between clips. Make sure that you're in the same position and you don't move too much because then there will be no movement of your head. What happens if you have a sudden movement of your head and it doesn't look well? Well, what you could do is you could use a very simple transition. Now I'm going to say a cross blur. There's lots of fancy transitions, but the problem is that if I put in a transition like this and I just play that Two was. Are you? No. It, it doesn't look that good to be honest. It's like that zooming in, zooming out. And I think that can distract people. Okay. So the type of transition that I would use would be something like a cross blur. I drag that over here in between the two clips and I double click here to make sure that this is at the quickest it can be 0 0.5 for example, actually goes on 0 0.2. And then when I just roll across here, you hardly see the blur there. Okay, so it's a very subtle uh, way of correcting any sudden movements of your head between different clips. With transitions, I would always tend to say, go for simple transitions. Don't go for anything too elaborate. I would continue on editing here. But let's say I want to put in titles. Well, what I would do is I would find where I want to put in the title. I could go into titles here and I can choose a title here. For example, a standard lower third. Again, I try and keep the simple titles. I put the title here. I double click on the text here. And here I would change the title. For example, I could say Life Coach. And then I could put my name underneath. Or I could put my name first and the Life Coach underneath. And I have options here to change the font. Again, a simple font is better. To change the size, to center that if I wanted. I could center both of them, to put it into bold and to actually change the color whichever way I want. Now when I've done that, that's it. That's that title. But what I would suggest is you use all the same style of titles because if you suddenly change to a line and then you put in a lower third, it, it just, it makes things very confusing. So try and keep everything exactly the same. If you want, Within the program that you're using, there's probably some effects that you can use here. So if I just now notice that I can't click anything up here, that's because what I have selected currently is the title. So what I need to do here is I just need to select the actual movie. And if I were to click on this button here, I can have clip effects and I could have this more like a silent era effect. Now you see how simple that is, okay? And whatever program that you're using will do exactly the same thing. I also have audio clips if I want, but I don't want any of those, so I'll just click on reset. The next thing you wanna make sure that you do is that you just check everything and you replay it again and again to make sure that everything sounds right, no words are cut off, etc. And if you've done what I said to do, which is to pause and talk very slowly, it's much easier to edit out any mistakes that you have. Now the final thing that you want to do on this basic editing is you want to export your actual file. So if I go to iMovie, I can go to File, I can go Share, and I can share this as email. I could share it directly to iTunes or YouTube or to Facebook or Vimeo, or I could actually just extract images if I wanted, like, a, like to have a key image for YouTube. But here what I'm gonna do is I want to click on file. I want to save this at the highest quality. Now, when I am doing Udemy courses, I usually put in 0101. So this would be section one, lecture one, and then I put in a name, and I do exactly the same here in the description. Now the quality resolution here is 1080. Um, 
which is the highest resolution I can export that, which is perfect. Under quality, I can decide to have low, medium or high. When I change the quality, the file size here goes down and when I increase the quality, it goes up. If I were to broadcast this or if I wanted to project it onto um, a screen in an auditorium, I would probably go to best. But look what happens to this file size here. When I go to best, it goes up to nine gigs, which is really too much for membership sites or for Udemy. It's easier to do high. Now with custom, I would get different options, okay, of, of where I might be streaming it from. But let's just keep it on high. I would click on next, and that will bring up the save as dialog box where I can actually save that and export it. Once I have it exported, what I would do is I would bring this into Udemy. So here we are inside my Udemy account. And as you can see, this is the course that I was creating, Mindfulness to Create an Amazing Life, which was the final name. So let me just go here and I hover over the name of the course and I click on go to course and it comes up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to curriculum and I'm going to add an extra lesson at the end of the course in order to show you how to upload the video. So I go down to the bottom of the list here and remember that in your course you can have video but you could also have a maybe PowerPoint presentation or an article but the more video you have and if it's talking head the better. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a lecture. I'm going to give this a lecture title of bonus and I click on add lecture and then I say add content. So I click on video. It tells me that each rendered file must be at least 720 and it must be less than four gigabytes. So I click on select and I find a video file here. I'll select this one, which is nice and small. I click on open and it starts to upload this video here. Now, it uploads this one quite quickly because it was only 18 megabytes. And in a second, the status will change to processing. And Udemy will actually email you when that video is processed. You'll see that this says unpublished lecture. You'll see that there's a little icon here. While I'm waiting, I might just add in a description. And that is all there is to uploading your Udemy videos. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete this because I don't want this to go onto my course. It says you're about to remove from the curriculum and I press OK. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how you're going to submit your course and the verification process that you need in order to become a verified instructor. If this is your first course and your first course that you're doing by yourself. If you're already working with a verified instructor, you won't see this.